sold the FZ6. Psych! I didn't sell the FZ6, at least yet. So here's the tea. I think my time with the FZ6 is coming to a close. I've had the thing for about seven years, really thoroughly enjoyed it, but I feel like it's time to move on. I hope you can relate to the feeling. So today, I've come up with three options for what the next bike's gonna be, and I hope you can help me decide what it will be. To give you some idea of what I'm looking for in any bike is that it has to be able to go the distance because I want to do some long touring again. So ideally, it has bags, like saddlebags, hard-shelled case things on the side and top. I don't really care if it's got all the features, but I would really like a quick shift and I would really like ABS. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. The first bike on the list is a Ducati Multistrada 1200. I know. Why would you go to the Ducati world? You love Yamaha. I know, I know. I love Yamaha too, but just hear me out. The Ducati is pretty sweet. Just like any fine Italian machine, it's pure motorsport design. It evokes so much emotion just looking at all that red painted bodywork and the finely crafted carbon fiber bits. And it's really tempting because they've really come down in price. Like this one right here. Posted on Marketplace for just under 15 grand. It's a 2015. And, uh, you know, it comes with bags right off the bat, which is awesome. It's got a slipper clutch. It's got Brembo brakes. It's got the one-sided swing arm. It's got these sweet headlights with a little bit of a beak on the front. From like 2012 to 2015 is where they're affordable. They're an L-Twin 1200cc, so it's pretty big power. It makes 150 horsepower and 87 foot-pounds of torque. They don't have a quick shift, which would be nice, but at least they got the slipper clutch. And it's an upright riding position. They go the distance. They're a pretty slick machine. They're well designed, uh, but they have some problems. After doing some reading on the forums, basically people say it can be really hard to get parts. There are parts available, but they're in Italy. And if you want them, you have to go to a Ducati dealership, pay up front for the part, and then wait two, three weeks for the part to get there, and then you resolve your problem. That's not really the deal with Yamaha. I have local Yamaha dealerships where I can call them on a Monday and see the part the next Monday. And I don't know where it comes from, but that's the kind of relationship they have with their suppliers. So it would be kind of a burden to have to fix the Ducati a lot, which it might need because Ducatis are not the most reliable machines out there, but it's definitely an option and it's something I could have a lot of fun with. It could just be a really fun bike and something nicer than I'm used to. Besides the downsides of having a hard time getting parts, it's a bit of a niche bike. I know I make content to put online and I want something that people can relate to. And if I'm riding a bike that such a small amount of people relate to, it's gonna be a hard time sharing my passion for that. There's not as many people that relate to it. It's kind of a niche bike and for that reason, I don't love it, but I think it would be a really cool riding experience nonetheless. Lastly, this would probably be the most expensive bike of the three I've got lined up here to insure because it's a 1200cc and where I am, the insurance company of British Columbia basically looks at the CC of the bike and puts you in a class of insurance. The larger the engine in the bike, the more you pay in insurance. So. It's not ideal. Moving on though, like we've got this example at 15 grand, we've got this one at 7,800, Multistrada, 1200S, you know, the inverted forks, Brembo brakes, and we've got the lattice frame. It's basically the same bike. This one's got some mods. It's a couple years older, but it's like half the price under eight grand. The guy just had a $2,000 Desmo service at Richmond Ducati. Like these are sweet add-ons, like the bike's ready to go. It does have almost 50,000 kilometers, which is a little much, you know, I'd wish it had a little less, but it's a good price, you know, eight grand. That's, that's really within my budget. I'd like to keep my budget under 10, ideally, but I'd will be willing to go further for just the right thing. Now this next bike is a bike that a lot of you have pointed me towards and said, you gotta pick this up, sell the FZ6, buy this. And what this is, is the Yamaha FZ1. Now, I like the FZ1. It's just very similar to the FZ6. And I know all you people that own an FZ1 say, no it's not. It's an inline four, very similar frame, very similar suspension geometry and design. I know it has the R1 engine with the cross plane crankshaft and all that is sick. It just isn't quite different. And it's not really much newer. Like I'm looking at an 09 here that's $6,200 and it's just not much newer. And I just worry about these things becoming old and having older bike problems, kind of like the FZ6 did with its failing ignition coils. So I'd really like to move something a little bit newer, something in the last decade. And this just doesn't quite tick that box. Sweet bike though. One downside is it doesn't have bags for touring. Like they didn't sell the FZ1 with bags from the manufacturer. They don't make an OE option to install it. Some of these bikes had ABS, but some of them didn't. So you'd have to find one optioned with ABS. And that can be hard just because there's not that many that come up for sale. 
and you could only get a quick shift in the aftermarket here. So Yamaha was not offering quick shifts from the factory in this. So there's no factory integration for quick shifts. So you have to go with like Heel Tech or Heel Pro. I forget the company and do an aftermarket solution, which you know is, is good. I mean, I know it's a good product. I just I would rather the bike was designed with a quick shift, but not optioned with, so I could just install it. And here's another example of another FZ1 for sale, 40,000 kilometers. It's got an exhaust. It's got some mods. You know, simple things. And it's, it's nice, you know, clean, 6,600 bucks, it's a good price. Next, the FZ8. And if you don't know about the FZ8, the FZ8 is basically it took an FZ1 motor, made the bore on the cylinder smaller, kept the stroke the same, and basically reduced the overall capacity. So it's around 800cc. And I've seen them online. They're cool bikes. I like them. I think they're great. I just see so few for sale that I wonder how many of them are actually out in the world. Like I said, I make content for people. I want to have a good riding experience, but I make content for people also. And I want a bike that people can relate to. Most of all, people own. So I think the FC8, for that reason, is out. Unless some of you tell me that the FC8 all around the world is popular. It's just not popular in North America. But, you know, tell me. Drop a comment down below if the FC8s are popular in your country. But now, the next model on my list is something I've hinted at in the channel before. I think it'd be a great next move. It just happens to be the most expensive move. I know, more expensive than the Ducati? It's hard to believe. But the next one is... The Tracer 9 GT. Now this is a 2021 up for like 17 grand and change through a local dealership, but it's basically brand new, no miles. Yeah, you know, it's got all the things. It comes with the side cases. It's got the inverted forks, the radially mounted brakes. It comes with ABS, traction control, a quick shift. Like it's got all the things, of course. And it's got like the color LCD display. Like it's got all the bits and bobs and tech and stuff that you would want, but it comes with a price, right? We're looking at almost $18,000 Canadian. It gets good fuel economy. This gets like 45 miles per gallon. Well, the FC1 and the Ducati don't quite do the same. So this gets really good fuel economy because it's a slightly smaller motor and probably the most newest motor with the most advanced tech for getting good fuel economy. It's got all the things I want, but it's just twice the price. It's just a bit out of my comfort range unless something changes or I get a really good dollar for the FZ6 I don't think this is in my budget so it got me looking at other options like this one in the states now this is 12.5 thousand US so that's like 16 grand Canadian so it's a little cheaper but it's used right this one's got just under 3,000 miles so it's like 5,000 kilometers but you know it's red I like the color it's got the cases it's got the quick shift it's got a slipper clutch heated grips cruise control ABS, like it's got all the good things and obviously it works. The guy likes it. He's just selling it on, move on to something else. So that's an option, another good one locally. The next thing I found is this FC09. You know, I love the Nardo gray, the green wheels, the thing pops. It's really nice. It's got the inverted forks, nice dash. Like it's not a color display. It could be nicer, but then like, like I said, where do you fit the bags? And is this really gonna be great for going the long distance on the highways like I wanna do? And yeah, I just not sure about that. So then, then you know, I go into the real adventure land and you find things like this, like a 2010 BMW R1200 GS. And I mean, if I was going to go to Mexico and back, this would be my weapon of choice, but I'm not going that far. I'm going probably two or three states away within a thousand miles, basically. And I'm not trying to go across the continent, which I think this bike is really meant for, like this guy. I'm just not that guy, pal. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, so it's nice. Obviously the guy's taking care of it. We're looking at 11 grand, but it's outfitted. This is basically what it would take to outfit an FZ09 or an FJ09. If you find it around eight grand, you're going to be spending close to 11.5 after bags and stuff like that. And heat grips, quick shift, things like that. This doesn't have a quick shift though. I don't think it has a slipper clutch. It's a... Uh, this is not my style either. Another bike that really caught my eye, this is like that weird mix of like the edge of sport touring. It's pretty crazy, but the BMW S1000XR, sick bike. You know, leader bike power with the S1000 motor basically just slightly detuned in here. Not loving the instrument cluster. Comes with cases, love that. I don't know, it's just a little expensive. We're talking 12 grand and it's a European vehicle. It's probably gonna have problems. I also haven't read a ton of reviews on these things uh, and there's not that many for sale, so it's hard to find them and get like a good price match on it and figure out if this is fair market value for the vehicle. But it, it's a nice bike, you know, the cases are nice, the stance, the, the aesthetic is everything I like. I'm sure it sounds good, I just don't know about it. So to recap, we're thinking the Ducati Multistrada is up there. Downsides would be, getting parts, servicing the bike, 
and it'd be taking on a whole new type of engineering. Ducati and Yamaha are two different fields of engineering. One uses valve springs, one doesn't. And it's a very different audience, very different group of people that would ride a Ducati versus the people that would ride a Yamaha. And as much as I think I would like the Ducati experience, I just don't know if it would resonate with you guys, but you can tell me down below if you think it would. Next up, the Tracer 9 GT, or an FJ09, or an, a modified FZ09. FZ09 is kind of last case scenario. If I can't find an FJ, I'd just go out with an FZ09 and maybe replace it with the right FJ later down the line. But ideally, an FJ09 or Tracer 9 GT for a good price. It just happens to be that they're expensive. They have all the things I want. See, part of me thinks it's a good idea to get a 2015, 16, 17 FJ09 because they're early and they're going to be cheaper. But at the same time, if you get a 2018 and newer FJ09, you can retrofit a quick shift from the factory into it. You just buy the Yamaha quick shift, and if it wasn't optioned from the factory, you just plug it into the harness and mount it and attach it. You don't even have to code anything. It just works with the ECU. So that's a sweet, cheap upgrade. They make good power, 115 horsepower. They get good fuel economy. To me, it's like the bike of the future. It's the newest. I can make the most videos about it. It's going to have a lot of people owning it in the coming next five years, and It'd be a really good bike. It'd be reliable. I'd be familiar with the engineering style. It'd be great. I think it'd be a good buy. I want to spice it up, try something different. That's why I'm really out in the no man's land of Ducati, Biscotti, because it looks sick. It'd be so different. It'd be fun. Maybe it would really hurt my wallet, and maybe it'd be a painful experience to learn to work on, but, you know, down for the ride and down to share it. So that's my dilemma, people. Let me know what you think in the comment down below. If you've owned any of these bikes, the Ducati, the FJ09, the FZ1, or the FZ8, let me know in a comment down below what you think I should do. I know it's sad to hear the FZ6 is probably, you know, on its last season, but you know, there's bigger and better things coming in the future. Thanks for watching, everybody. Please smash the like and subscribe button down below, and as always, have a good day.